Hi, um, I'm Taylor Holmes, again. Uh, I have a few things I'd like to say just really fast. I'm not going to include this into the series of the entire series that I'm trying to do now. Um, I got some new health units in the mail. Um, they look like this. There's they got some really long wires to them. It's the same part number though. TEC 1-12709. Uh, this part number is useful. Very, very useful. Um, what I what I really recommend though is if you're using these at all, don't don't put 12 volts through them unless you really, really absolutely know for sure that you have the heat side completely contacted with your heat sink. If if for a, even a second it, it comes apart from your heat sink and this is still, you know, live, uh, what happens is the hot part will get so hot and the cold part will still be cold, right? The hot part will start to slightly expand a little bit. Not much, but just kind of like a microscopic level. Because heat makes things do that, and cold makes things contract on the other side. So what's going to happen is it, you're going to distort this thing a little bit, and all the wiring inside of here, and there's a lot in here, it all start to come disconnected. And you're going to have to figure out, suddenly you're going to realize, hey, there's nothing going on in this unit anymore, and it's because it's all disconnected. Because every single component in this is in series with each other. Every This whole thing is one series circuit in here. So once you break one piece of it, you broke the whole thing. Now, uh, a lot of these have this insulation al along the edge, so what you're going to need to do to fix it is you're going to need to take like a really, really tiny flathead and take off that white insulation and find out where the discontinuity is. You're going to need a multimeter that has uh, something called a continuity test. And um, you'll, you know, clamp one end of your multimeter onto one end and stick the other part just, I mean, you basically just start tapping away at it until you figure out where inside here the discontinuity is. I mean, if you don't hear a beep, then it's disconnected. If you hear a beep from your multimeter, then that's that part is good. So what you're going to need to do is take a soldering iron and solder the discontinuity close. It's almost always going to be along the edge of the of the pelter unit. Almost always. It's not usually going to be in the center. It, it kind of makes sense though for that to happen because whenever you have expansion on one side and contraction on the other side. Uh, the edges are going to be most affected by that, which is really good because that means they're easy to fix. Um, if these things were cheaper, I wouldn't even try to fix them. I'd just order more, but it takes like three weeks for me to get them. I don't know why. And uh, so I have a total of six now. The first two, I was pushing so much through them that they both I fried both of them. I fixed them, then they fried again, and I fixed them again. So uh, those two are still in working condition. So I have a total of six of these. I'm not using this one and one other one for right now. Um, I have a total of four of these thermoelectric units hooked up into my cooler here. Uh, one other thing, um, I decided instead of electrical tape as insulation, my cousin actually suggested this, I got some of this weather stripping. It's, I've actually had this in my trunk of my car for years. And um, I use that to insulate the hot heat sink from the cold heat sink. And uh, I'll give you a quick shot of that. That's what that looks like. It's all along the edges there. It's uh, it works really well. My my entire cooler though is not as powerful as I'd like it to be. Um, I think it could be using all the stuff I have now. It really could be. Oh, uh, where did I put that? I have some uh, silicon caulking here. It's waterproof, but more importantly, it's silicon, which means it's an extremely good insulator. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to replace all this tape and electrical tape and stuff eventually once I really figure out what's going on. Because uh, this is more permanent. This it just peels right off. It's fine. But using this, I, I've really sealed the deal. So I haven't even I haven't really gotten the courage up yet to use this yet. But what I'm going to do is, my, my cousin Robert also suggested this. Because of the, the nose here is so big and I'm trying to fine tune where I'm putting this stuff, I'm going to take like a, a plastic sandwich bag and put some of the silicone in it, poke a tiny little needle hole into the bag and use that to distribute the, the caulking. And uh, I'll be able to fine tune where it goes and where it doesn't go, rather than just like, you know, getting a whole blob on there and then having to control a mess. And it's, that's just really bad. But um, if I uh, kind of micromanage where I distribute it, I think I could really do a good job. Uh, that's really all I've got for right now. And a lot of people have been asking me, oh my god, part 10 is out. Does it work yet? Does it work yet? And, uh, it kind of works. It just sucks. That's the only thing. It just sucks right now because I don't have a good good insulation between the hot sink, the hot heat sink and the cold heat sink. And, um, I also need to find a way of making this whole lid airtight. 
so that heat doesn't transfer around. One other thing that is absolutely necessary that I need to get more of is something called thermal glue or thermal compound paste stuff. Um, a lot of people use the aluminum type. Um, I'm going to be using something called, I can't remember what it's called, it's white though, and uh, I'm going to be using that as a heat sink compound to, basically I'm using it as glue to glue the Peltier unit. I'm just simply going to be gluing the Peltier unit to the heat sink. But I can't do that until I absolutely know that this is the design I want, this is what I want to make permanent because, I mean, that stuff takes a while to cure and to dry up and everything. I've actually been able to pry these off after using the thermal compound for a couple of days and it came off pretty well. But um, I'm not going to use any more of that until I'm absolutely saying, okay, we have it, let's glue it in place and watch it work. So I'm getting more of that in the mail. I'm getting about 10 grams of it. It's, it's pretty effective. A lot of people use something called a thermal tape. And thermal tape looks great. It looks easy to remove and everything. And I like that, except that it's about 10 times more expensive than the thermal paste stuff. Um, of course, the reason I call it thermal paste is because you want you want to glue your heat sink onto here, but you want the paste itself to be a good heat conductor. So, as opposed to this, which is also a glue, but it's a heat insulator. So I'm going to be using an insul highly insulative glue type stuff, or this caulking, silicon caulking, and I'm going to use highly heat conducting glue, which will be the thermal compound that I'm going to be using. But, like I said, so far, it, it works, but it's really weak. It's just really, really weak. The top side of this is warm. I need to get it hotter. Um, when you're first using these Peltzer units, make sure to keep the voltage low before you use heat compound um, so you don't fry your units. Otherwise, you're going to have to solder them and fix them, and that's just a pain in the ass to do. Um, meanwhile, that's all I've got for right now. I don't really have anything good to show you, but um, I'm just trying to explain this for people in the future out there who are trying to figure out how to use thermal electricity for things and if you're doing it yourself in your garage kind of like I am there's just some secrets that you need to know like that and uh, a lot of people on YouTube don't very explicitly help out with that so that's all I've got for right now I'll see you later hey everybody uh, one more thing I forgot to add is I'm actually, I actually just got a new heat sink on eBay, I just won the bid today, and uh, it's going to be really, really nice. It's, uh, it's going to be about five and a half inches tall, about the same, you know, bottom area as the one I have now, but it's going to be a much better heat sink. It's, I don't even know if I'm going to need a fan for this one. It's, it's pretty nice. It's got a hell of a lot more surface area than this one does. And, um, here's a picture of it right here. And, as you can see, it uses, uh, some, some copper tubing. It uses copper at the very bottom of it. That, uh, copper is a, is a better insulate, uh, a better conductor of heat than aluminum is. And so most of it you see is aluminum. That's what all the plates are made of. But the copper is the thing that's really going to be, you know, conducting most of the heat. Why would they use so much aluminum? Well, aluminum's a hell of a lot cheaper. Copper is simply more expensive. That's why not even pennies are made out of copper anymore these days. Simply because of how expensive they are. But, um, I hope this is going to work well. And I hope to see you guys next time. Uh, whenever I get it, I'll show it to you. Until then, i got to go to work in a few minutes. So, later.